Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, March 24th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Live, the Bear Podcast, the Vintage Terminal Link, episode number 733. And we're... Doing kind of uh, I tried to cut it off, but it's a really short clip, (laughs) right? Another let's talk about not sex, not kink, not food, but could be related to all of those. True. I, mm. True. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. The thing is, the the key word there is <laughs> could be. You one could make a connection if they wanted to. There's a hanky for that. <laughs> is there? Well, for a I hanky. think there is. Interesting. Pretty sure there is. For a K, which would possibly roll into an S which are going to involve the F <laughs> as Damon goes researching to see if there is a hanky for that I'm sure there is a a, a, a color I feel like there was sorry I'm I mean reading a, a very small print very fast <laughs> <laughs> technically Anything could have a hanky if you really. I mean, to. true. Yes, leopard. Oh, has tattoos, likes tattoos. Oh, oh I thought I you were also going to relate that to to an F in there too, because you have a, have a kink about food during sex. Gotcha. Tattoo. I was thinking more about the the topic of the show. Yes. Speaking of which, dairy. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, I don't think we've talked about this at all. Question mark in the history of the podcast. Um, So yeah, tattoos from the dawn of time. We've been marking up our bodies with artwork of varying kinds. Some temporary, others very permanent. You know, and I was thinking about this. The bear community has its own version of different ink styles as tattoos over the decades. And then I started wondering, like, has tattoo, like, as an art form, become less prominent? And by that I mean, um we sometimes kind of tease about this, like, cause we're cubs of a certain age that there was a time where it was like, that was one of the things you did. Mm. Like if you remember the bear uniform of the nineties, like you wore (laughs) shit kickers and faded jeans and flannel shirts. And I think invariably you had a tattoo, if not more than one tattoo, I think about how like armbands Mm -hmm. were a thing for a while. Um, and then briefly tramp stamps like moved mm-hmm. over from other parts of pop culture into our area. Um, 
So yeah, like I just it got me thinking in in terms of that. I mean, and when I say like it's been around for a long time, I mean tattooing. We're gonna have a couple of articles linked on our blog, but there's one um, from Wikipedia about the history of tattooing, and it's been around like for a very 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 long time, like from the okay. Neolithic and uh, Paleolithic uh, periods. We're talking like nearly back to four thousand. 3500 like bc stuff all the way forward there's been some aspects of using um modification to the skin and mm. um, different practices of that case some of it's been religious some of it hasn't um and what intrigues me is like you know in the u.s here it you know took a couple of you know different turns um the uh you know the US has had its moments but what i find interesting is you know it was mostly related to like thought to be like of groupings or cultures like mm -hmm. gangs are an example yeah and then um you know of late we saw that there was kind of a change because of popular culture. Um, and for us, that was mostly like in the eighties, the seventies, the eighties brought that about, especially when celebrities were getting tattoos and it was notable. Um, yeah. And so that I think shifted things. And I think there's been a moment where like they've come to the forefront in terms of culture. I remember when I was in college, I was in a class and there was a young lady who like was showing off that she got a tattoo over the weekend and it was like one of those tree frogs. Mm, I remember mm -hmm, mm -hmm. those. And I remember saying to a project mate, I was like, Oh, I'm like, well, that's disappointing or something. And the person working on the project with me is like, why? Like, why do you care? And I was like, is she really going to be happy with that in like another 40 years? Because <laughs> it seemed because and then they they didn't understand why I was being so critical. And I was like, it seems like she just did it to be random. Mm. Like she did it to just do it. And I was like, I don't think that little frog has any meaning to her at all. And mm. they're like, well, do tattoos have to have a meaning? And I was like, why else would you mark up your body? Oh, <laughs> it's something that's not temporary. Well, and that was that was really my perspective. Like I, my feeling on it is like, you only have one body and you've only have so much skin. And I guess I had been around a lot of people by that point or enough people that I hadn't, that I quickly discerned like those, there are people who get tattoos just for the fun of it. And then there are people who get tattoos because it means something. And I really came to appreciate those that were like, this is meaningful to me because like, I like this art aesthetic style. This is something that I collect or is a hobby or these are names of loved ones I've lost or, you know what I mean? Like, like they had significance to them. Mm. And hmm. so I feel that, you know, people don't necessarily, um, you know, I guess mm -hmm. always view it from that perspective or that weight. Sometimes they just want something cute. As a little tattoo. Just a little like it. it's it's interesting. Um or or like me has a certain significance, but not necessarily fully meaningful. Mm -hmm. Like so my two tattoos, one I put them in a place that's very inconspicuous. It's just on my shoulder blades. Okay. Right? Oh, I, I didn't share. So when I turned around flashing them, you probably didn't see them. <laughs> well, so I looked at the live feed and I could sort of see it because on the camera that we're using, we see you through Jeff as co-host. You totally disappeared. Like it was nothing but oh. the animal print the whole time. So like on the live feed, I know that people could kind of see it a little bit. I, I, I didn't. Oh, yeah. oh, you're, you're very flashy. Okay. <laughs> so I see Do you a little. Dragonfly? 
Okay, the dragonfly. Yeah, it's supposed to have a little bit of the pink coloring. It might have faded a little bit. On the other side, is there your power off button? The power button. I was gonna say power bottom button. <laughs> I suppose it is on the right side, so. <laughs> Not Could you the imagine? true meaning of it. <laughs> just, just hope, you know, press and hold for 30 seconds to get the hard reset. Just... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Just... This is, this is was... how you is that, turn is me that, on. Is that, is that how you yeah. get beyond the refractory period? <laughs> It's it's fun, yeah. You know, random aside, I just I remember um, there's a shirt that I remember that had that symbol, and it was it was kind of in the like the bear things, and it was like it was a it was power top, and it had the like symbol as the O was the power button. I was like, okay, that's cute. Uh, I did think that was cute. I did like yeah. that. Anyway, um, so I guess that's a good question, Jeff. You were talking about you said they they were quasi significant but yeah so i'm going to call it like super significant and especially considering of where they are sometimes i forget that i even have them mm-hmm. uh, uh but the reason why i got these two specific things is because at the time i i got them i was really into the band garbage and on their version 2.0 album, uh, all their singles had some sort of symbol. In the case of Push It, which is one of my favorites, was the power button. Oh. It was on like a, a white pill with hmm. the, the power button symbol and the red background. And then another favorite song of mine on there from there, "You Look So Fine." Uh, the symbol was a butterfly, and mm. even at the little bottom of uh, their uh, later sing- singles of that era, they had like the generic version of each of those symbols listed on there so huh so because i like them so much i and i was like i'm when did i get them must have been in the 2000s so in my early 20s maybe maybe sooner i was in college at the time i was like oh well the power button was college the other one was later. Uh, I just want to get one of these symbols. And I started with the push it a few years later. Post call getting kicked out of college. <laughs> and moving up to the Twin Cities for my birthday. I was like, I'm just going to get another tattoo on the other side for You Look So Fine. And I think push it was the first single and You Look So Fine was the last single. I even thought about like getting the other symbols, like either like in two columns along each side, or or just like a crossbar. So I had all of them, but uh, I decided not to go that deep. Got it. So it has a significance because it's a band you like. That's sort of the meaning. Mm-hmm. And because it's 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 there, it's out of the way. It looks cute, like generically speaking, when somebody mm. sees it. Uh, it and might be a little convert, uh, you know, pillow talk conversation, conversation starter, starter, you know, mm-hmm. sort of thing. It's it's not that big of a deal, and it's simple. It's not like mm-hmm. it's like a sleeve. Yeah. Um. It. It's one of those things that I never regret getting them. Mm. Um, and even though, like, I don't really listen to music much nowadays, most of it is just podcasts or watching YouTube videos. Um, 
But hey, if those songs come on, I'm either grooving to <laughs> to push it or just like because you look so fine thirty mellow. Hmm. Although it does hmm. have a kind of a, nice. Sorry, I'm looking for something. I still love Garbage. It's still consider. I still consider it my favorite band. So still there. But Gary, that's me when do, it comes to tattoos. Ah. Mm-hmm. But Gary, do you have a tattoo or any? I do not. Ah. I've thought for many years about getting one or more than one. And I haven't. Um, I briefly kind of entertained the idea when I was in college, but I at the time thought I was going to have a professional career in a way that I didn't want to like have that become an issue. Although technically I always have kind of wanted something on my arm or Mm -hmm. arms. So on my upper arms, like, so if I wore a sleeve or something, even if I wore short sleeve, like it wouldn't really be a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, like when I turned 30, I got my ears pierced. That was a big thing. And I remember like thinking, Oh, like my next milestone, that's when I'll get my tattoo. Well, 40 came and went. <laughs> 50's here. And as I was mm-hmm. just listening to Jeff talk about like the significance of him, I was like, oh, I only got a few months left. <laughs> if I'm gonna get it done this year. If you're but, gonna get it done. But I but I suffer from um, and I can't think of quite what the right term is. But it's it's perfection. Like I have an anxiety Mm. about getting a tattoo because I want to get the right thing. Right. And that's why I haven't gotten one in like half my lifetime because I kind of know aesthetically the style that I want to see in the imaging. There's someone I um, used to hang out with a long time ago that actually went to Canada to a very specific tattoo artist that has a very unique style and is booked if they're if they're they might still be a tattoo artist this day i don't know if they are like you have to book them like a year to two years in advance or more and they're not cheap but i really liked the art style a lot and i thought that would be cool to see them like take something conceptually that i would like and put it into that and that's the other part that's a little difficult is like artistically knowing somebody that i trust their style with um So, like, I think of Bob out on the West Coast, um, you know, who is a tattoo artist and, you know, in the bare leather community and um, have seen their stuff and, you know, they've been pursuing that. I've had a couple of friends who have either been tattoo um, artists as in they design the stuff or they also um, do the tattooing. So, and I've known people who have, like, full sleeves, like, most of their body covered um so yeah like it like it's a thing that i've kind of wanted to do my dad has uh three tattoos four tattoos one two yeah one on each chest um area and then one on each arm um and in the one on his one chest like area he had done over like he covered it with another tattoo (laughs) you're muted so <laughs> did that thing again. Um out of curiosity for your dad, did he was he did he serve in the military? No, but okay. He wore dog tags for a long time. He he actually tried to go into the military, but he was overweight, so they refused him. And he wasn't significantly overweight. I mean, this was like yeah. late sixties, early seventies. Yeah. Um and he's he talked openly about the fact that he kind of never considered like when he was disappointed that he wasn't able to go into the military that he would appreciate that later in the Mm. early eighties after the Vietnam war, Mm. because he realized he probably would have gone to Vietnam and what Mm. that, what his life would have been like, he doesn't know. Um, so yeah, like, so anyways, he had, he always had dog tags that were made that had like his name on them, but also because he was a blood donor, um, and, um, always had like a medical alert type bracelet deal, but instead he always like had, cause I don't know if people knew this medical alert used to be like, um, a bracelet that you would wear, 
but in it, dad had problems with the bracelets because like the chain would end up snapping or popping. He worked on vehicles a lot. So like he would want to get it caught. Yeah. yeah. Apart. So he ended up going with what they had a version that was a dog tag and it said like your blood type and your date of birth and stuff like that. So now that he's where he is for a while, he had those dog tags and, um, they ended up getting misplaced or something the last time he was in a hospital, which is really unfortunate. But um, because he had them and the way dad kind of talked in the tattoos, a lot of the staff has presumed that he's a veteran and yeah. they actually, you know, kind of have made reference. And I've had to correct them and be like, that, 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 for the record. I'm like, he's, he, he was yeah. not enlisted and like, don't, please don't <laughs> contact the VA. Or something because they're gonna be like, we have no record of this individual. Yeah. So I don't want him like to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But. Interesting. It's just odd because the things that we're mentioning is something that is probably why it's been so long for me to get one. Um, I was very much, I grew up in, in family where it was not forbidden, but it was definitely not talked about. Um, I don't recall anyone on my, especially on my dad's side of the family, having tattoos. Um because it was like, and the reasons being, they were seen as unprofessional. They were seen as, as, as you know, it's going to be, it's forever, it's indefinite. You, you're, you're never going to be able to take it off, which we now know you, you can essentially get them removed. But um, uh, my brother has several. Hmm. Um, the one I recall the most is there's one on his neck of my sister's name, and you know, because she passed. Mm-hmm. Um, but like. Uh, I've seriously thought about it many, many, many times. Um, not not necessarily milestone, but just in general. Um, and I, I'm the main concern I've often had is the one that you have, Gary, which is I want something because I know it's going to be forever. I want something that I truly want that's going to be on my body. Right. Um, when I was in college the first thing that came to mind actually a little after college um was getting um the um symbol for oh i just it's just left my head the oh the treble clef okay clef um and i there was a there's an artist called brian a music artist called brian knight has a similar tattoo um it was part of his um uh, years ago so this is dating me again um there used to be like there was a time when cds you could put them in a computer and they came with like their own like visual art that mm-hmm. went along with it and one of the things i remember is he had one where um it was him holding a guitar and it had his arm like sleeveless he was sleeveless and it had his arm his arm tattoo and it kind of glowed and then became part of the lyrics i thought it was so cool i just it was a cute like moment and um but i never got it because i knew it was something that would be permanent um jim and i have talked back and forth about getting tattoos as well um um i am also super fucking like I, I don't have a big pain tolerance. I do not have a high pain tolerance and um, I don't like needles. So like all of these things are working against me for me to get one. But the idea has crossed my mind several times uh, to a point where I do um, do ink box. I, I remember doing that, mm-hmm. I think, especially during the pandemic. So ink yeah, box years ago. Yeah, they're they're temporary tattoos, but they last a little bit longer than like the rub on ones you used to get like um in like the Cracker Jack box or whatever. Um and I remember I did one, I think I showed it on the podcast at one point in time. Um on each um I think I did. Yeah, I, I, did say, I know you it. showed them to me. Yeah. Yeah. I re- I remember talking about it anyway. Yeah. And one of the designs is one, I think if I were to ever actually get a tattoo, I'd probably get it. Cause it was a, it was a Phoenix, but it was made out of um, music things. It was like, it had like the treble clef and um, 
musical notations, like symbols and such, which I thought was really cool. Um, but again, it's a matter of confirming if I want to do it and getting up the courage to do it because it's not easy. Um, bringing it back to like the podcast topic and bears, um, there was almost always like 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 a rite of passage, as it were, to get like the bear paw tattoo. Um, I remember that like significantly being a thing, especially when I was rolling around with a few of my friends, um, and also like talking about getting them and like having that fun conversation about what you want and what is what the meaning is and what it would do. Um, oh. One of the, there's I, I don't even know where he's at now, but years and years ago, when like around the time I first moved here, there was a guy, and I remember specifically, he's like, I just want a tattoo that says chaos. I'm like, why? He goes, because it's because I'm chaotic. I'm like, um, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, didn't have like an idea for a font or anything. I just he just wanted one to say chaos. I'm like, that's that's nice. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's so one of the things I was kind of wondering about is like, do we do we think that there were fads that have come and gone? Um, and so, like, you know, in the imagery for for today, like what are the things some people ki- might kind of think of as a tramp stamp? Mm-hmm. Um, I think of as kind of like an armband. They were mm-hmm. very tribal, de- like designs. Yeah, I remember and there was, that. That was an interesting kind of weird phase that like came through. Um, for a time. So I, I wasn't sure how I felt about that. Um, cause I was like, I mean, the first time I ever saw one, I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool. But then like the authenticity or the originality of it, I guess wore off for me, the more I saw it on other people, even though yeah. they were different designs, it was just purely that they sort of had a similarity to them in some fashion. I was like, Oh, Yeah. I remember the tribal tattoo fad of like the 2000s, like that was such a thing. And the, like the thing that comes to mind often is like, just like the dark lines that kind of form this just random design, but it almost always looked the same on everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, I I do think it comes and goes. I do think it definitely comes and goes. Tattoo like fads come and go. Um, the armband thing is quite hilarious for me because I was, the ones, it almost always depends on where they're putting it. Cause there's like the ones that are up here that are kind of like, oh, okay. You've got like your kind of things. And then there's the ones on the forearm, which have a totally different meaning. Oh, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. within the kink community, those mm-hmm. that are of the red hanky wearing type. I did not know that. <laughs> Jeff, I, I saw your face. <laughs> it's how deep you can go with your fist and your arm in a how in a, in a... can you go? How deep <laughs> can you go? <laughs> <laughs> like some some tech like like especially in the kink community, and these are ones I remember specifically. There's there's the armbands, which are kind of like essentially like the long black band that goes around the arm, forearm. Right. It's how deep, like the deepest you've ever gone or whatever. Some for some, and there are some that um, have literally put rulers on their arms. Yeah. Well, there's that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, Adam Savage of tested.com like in his youtube series which i which i subscribe to and watch like all the time he has a imperial and metric ruler on the inside of his forearm and it's actually a temporary tattoo you can buy from his merch store because people <laughs> liked it so much and he talked so openly about how he uses it nearly every day mm-hmm. like he like he seriously comprehended and thought about it and then like made it a thing so like, like he i need a ruler knows... so much <laughs> right right just like just make arm? Just make my body a like a, a tool, so to speak. How long is this? Let me just check. Um. Right. I mean, it, and but he that's admits like three that, inches. Right. Right. Like he admits that he wouldn't use it to measure something. Like, it's 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 understandably 
an approximate. Like it, it's not mm-hmm. meant to be so exact. It's just conceptually like, you know, oh, is that like two, two and a half? You know, just as a, a something, something but, a guiding principle sort of thing. Right, right. Although it would be great in our community if we want to measure dick sizes. You just kind of reach <laughs> down and there's the ruler right next to it. Get hard from me, buddy. We're going to see just exactly. We're going to confirm if you're actually eight inches. Well, <laughs> it, it, you, you start like working it and then. Then you just kind of like you're trying to do some extra <laughs> stimulation and be like, all right, Ooh. all right, listen, no, listen, I'm just going to say this right now. If I'm with somebody and like they happen to like take their arm that has a ruler tattoo and move it up strategically to like measure the length of, of my junk. No, you know, you, you know, that pack your stuff, that, get that out sort of I'm like packing my stuff and I'm leaving like no sensual no. jack off me- uh, 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 method of like. Kind of like running the side of your arm right next uh, next to it, and it's like no. discreetly no. measuring. Your... There's nothing discreet about that. Ooh, nice six incher. Oh, eight inches. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes, that's, that's the end of that <laughs> session. Either you get up and leave, or I get up and leave. Oh, no. yeah, that's not the no. It's okay. I get it. It's it's funny. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a th- I mean, it, it happens. Like you said, it's fucking happen. Happens. Well, we have we have it, also things like Josh Shear. Speaking of other other YouTubers, uh, has a spork on his arm. <laughs> I mean, he is the right, musical chef. So let me ask this: Like, do we think we've moved into a time? Like since the change of the millennia or the 2010s to now, like that people do in general think more seriously about their tattoos. Like they just don't. I mean, I, there will probably always be drunk college 20 something well, like yeah. aged individuals that are just like, eh, I'm going to get a tattoo, you know, and then like. Well, here, here's the thing is, uh, it's. I don't think. That. A generalization: People are thinking that deep about their tattoos. Like, honestly, like the the sport that Josh has has. I don't really think he thought like that seriously about getting is like, hey, this would be be great. I'm a mythical chef or a symbol of the f- spork. This would be really cool. Not necessarily a drunk night. Probably spend spend some a little bit of time thinking about it. Like, should I get it? But it's more of a right. fun sort of thing versus a this has a deep meaning for him. Well, I mean, I I don't I I think he's in the middle ground of that. Like, I do, I agree with you. Like, he wasn't drunk when he you know got it and was just mm-hmm. like getting it on a whim for no reason. I think he got it for a reason, but maybe mm-hmm. it doesn't have quite the deep significance. Yeah. Right, right. But that's but but I don't mean that it can't that it has to have a deep significance i just mean in general that i feel like people tend to you know get sometimes at least and this is where i'm i feel like i'm out of touch because i haven't really seen wow it's been a long time since i think i've seen anybody with a fresh tattoo i think it's a mixed bag i i I think it's it's very much a mixed bag of, of of getting it like my tattoos I got because I'm like, hey, this would be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting things which at the time had a significance, but it was more of just, this was fun. It's in a place that's very inconspicuous. I can easily cover it up. Mm-hmm. Nobody would know unless I told them or showed them right. and or showed right. them. You know, how many people are going to see me shirtless? Um, and uh, I think it's going to be this mixed bag nowadays of people who are trying to get fun, but I think everybody is at least, I think they're probably, don't quote me on this because, you know, I'm not necessarily hip with the kids these days, but uh, I think people are thinking about getting it more seriously, but not to the extent of like deeper meaning, like spending months trying to find the 
perfect design necessarily. It's yeah. like, hey, I want a tattoo. They're probably making sure they have considerations. Hey, do I want to go like all in on this and be something that's like mm -hmm. constantly visible? Or is this going to be like fun and inconspicuous? You know, like uh, yeah. so many people have gotten like the itty bitty little design on their ankle. Right, right. You know, it's well, while some other people it's going to have deeper meaning or for some people it might be it makes them feel good or something don't quote me on any of this we've seen some of the some of the deep designs that people have that like cover like their entire people who get a full mm -hmm. sleeve people who get like their full chest and yeah body and, and and just all over they really go in and think deeply about the design people mm -hmm. are considering it and not just like on a drunk night hey, we're gonna go get a tattoo or something yeah. and they just like get a tattoo like on a whim or a drunken stupor it, it's i i think people are are at least taking it seriously enough that they're going to be taking the time, figure out the right thing. Some people are going to be like, I want a spork. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just, it, I, it, it, if, I just want a spork. Right. You know, the it's design always, isn't necessarily fully, or it's like, oh, this is already here. Here, I would like this on here as an, an outline. That's it. You know? Uh, yeah. Well, some people are going to be like, no, I need like a really interesting, I need to get an artist and, uh, and yeah artists to get it out and i gotta get it just right but at that point in time if they're going that deep in and getting an artist to do it that they, they, they're they're definitely gonna get they've been wanting to get that exact thing and really taking it seriously meaning wise for some people it's gonna be a huge meaning like you like damon your brother put your si sister's name Mm -hmm. that's a deep meaning for him. Yeah. And that's sort of the thing I often, I feel is going to be like the sort of as tattoo, because I think tattoos have become more, I don't, we're mainstream as Gary kind of mentioned, like they've become, we've, we've not, the taboo-ness of tattoos has gone mm -hmm. away um, in a lot of ways. They're, they're no longer, I mean, some companies probably, but not nearly as many are like as restrictive about tattoos. Like, um, Jim was telling me about, I forget, it's been some years, but Kings Island used to have some strict policies about things and tattoos and visible tattoos and all that stuff. And that's kind of gone away over the years. Um, but, and that's sort of where I think some of the like changing of tattoos has come where mm -hmm. we're no longer we no longer need to worry too much about where they are and what um what they are um i mean some can worry about certain things but like the most main reasons are like do you want something on your body and do you like body modification is this something that you want on your body for forever and another thing is kind of to just point like artwork is readily available now um i just did a random search just now for something an idea i've had for years and years and years I'm like oh i found some really nice concept art online and i can like take to an artist tattoo artist and have them work something out and they could probably and technology would probably make it easy for them to just like print it and you know make the template and then put it on you it's easier now i think right um in a ways hmm. yeah i mean i i feel like the accessibility factor has changed significantly i think i think there was a time when it was like sort of considered taboo but also like it was very cultural like in mm -hmm. the concept of getting it and i know within the gay male community like after the world wars that like 
getting tattooed was like a sign of that like hyper masculinity concept. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's been some amazing stuff. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's a couple of like documentaries that have been made, plenty of books that are out there about gay male culture and like tattooing and the tattooing world and like the crossovers between that and most motorcycle clubs and leather clubs and, and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I think there's a, a fair amount of that that's available out there. I just, it got me wondering because I, because I feel like, am I just not aware of the culture as much or is the culture, does it not stand out because it is more accepted? I mean, my, my hairdresser, well, not really hairdresser, barber, um, she is covered in, in tattoos and her husband is a tattoo artist. Um, and so like, I just really appreciate like that they are like artistic people and from that standpoint. And I thought that was pretty cool that like, you know, she came recommended from a gay man. Um, it was at a function. It was a dinner group that, you know, I was going to, and I mentioned something about, cause I think they just got their haircut and I said that it looked really good. And they're like, Oh yeah, thanks. Like I go to my barber. She's pretty cool. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, she barber. I was like, I didn't know that was a thing in, in our town or whatever. So, Oh, I mean, like, I, I presume most barbers in my area are either older white men or black men. Mm. And it's a, and it's a primarily like African-American black owned establishment and clientele. Mm. Like it's like one of two things in this city. So the fact that there was a younger white woman that like was a barber stood out to me. Um, and she worked out of a salon, although when I went to her the very first time, the running joke is I showed up and she said, Hey, so I was glad that like you booked an appointment to like, have me cut your hair and I'm still willing to do it. I just need you to know that today's my last day. And she was like, I'm going like to leave the salon and I'm going to go to a different place and have my own business. You're welcome to come along. I'm not Mm. trying to poach you, but I also don't want to mislead you if you like, like the haircut and then think you're going to come back and get me because I won't be here right so i mean and i thought that was so amazingly forthright and forthcoming and i was like i don't care like <laughs> i just need to get my hair cut. here to get my right. hair cut well and my thought was like i'm not beholden to this place or whatever like this is the first time i've ever been here so don't matter to me. <laughs> so it might be my last because you're not going to be here like... right right and i've been with her <laughs> since and she's been in three locations she was there she was a different place and now she operates out of her home and in fact i go and get my hair cut on tuesday um <laughs> but like, like I just, it was one of those things that, you know, I, I think about the only times that tattoos really kind of stand out to me in today's culture is if there's like something vibrant about the art and the design. And I also wonder if that's the thing that's like shifted is now like people want like more uniqueness and an artistic style. And so they want, you know, like I've seen all sorts of like stuff that's online and this is prior to the AI like technology introduction where you're just like, is that even real? Like some of it looks three dimensional. Um, Yeah. Like some of the styles are just really something else. Um, So yeah, I mean, I still, I still kind of think about it and consider it. I, I don't think it's had the significance that it used to. I feel like there was, like you said, Damon, like a rite of passage, Mm-hmm. At a certain point, probably I would say throughout the 90s up to the millennium, like that that was a thing that you did, you know. Yep. So now I don't know quite what that is um, in terms of like its significance or its importance. Yeah. But maybe that's a sign of the change of things, you know, that yeah. now we look at it from a, from that we it's something that we look to do and we can do or will do. But there's not really like a cultural, mm-hmm. um, I don't know how I want to say that, like pressure or getting yeah. to fit in. Yeah. It's sort of become, I don't want to say the mainstream, but it's almost become a norm. Like, I don't want to say it is. I don't think everyone is going out and getting tattoos. I don't think like tattoo artists are rolling in dough like all the time because they constantly have all these, you know, clients and what have you. But um, it was, funny to me because like I was introduced um, to I mean year this is years ago when I was first introduced to um, 
um, Kim's brother and sister-in-law. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things he said to me about them kind of being, you know, hip and whatnot was that, oh, they get tattoos and, you know, all the, like, they're, 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 they're in the know, even though they were still kind of Christian-ish, like, they were still, like, like, they're hip because they got tattoos. And I was like, that's cute. Um, like, 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 it's nice to know that because they would, they, he was thinking more along the lines that they would be upset, accepting. Um, oh, right. And all of that. Cause we weren't fully out at that point. Um, or he wasn't fully out to everyone in his family yet. Right. Um, but you know, no, it was I, just this, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, David, I think that makes perfect sense. Like from a cultural standpoint, not many people who are tattooed are necessarily, um, conservative or mm-hmm. close-minded. Not right. to say that they don't exist. Correct. Because I'm sure there is plenty of those like type of tattoos that are out yes. there. Um, but yeah, like I, I think it, it like it, it's a it's a piece of our culture that kind of like removes a barrier in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you would think someone with a tattoo might be more tolerant. Well, I mean, they had they, to put up with the pain of getting a tattoo. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not really equivalent, but yeah. Yeah. But it's Again, not that bad, at least from my size. Well, Jeff, when you said you got them on your shoulder blades, I was going to say, oh, like that's a tender area. Jim yeah, got his on his chest. But... Jim has one. He got one. I. He, it was a birthday gift for me. He wanted a tattoo, and so I paid for it. Yeah, um, he had he had had an idea for years and years, and he was he found the right like image that he wanted finally after searching forever, and he finally got the idea the look, and then kind of asked him, "So where do you want?" And he was like, "I want it on my chest." And I'm like, "Okay, um, good luck with that." Uh, <laughs> I didn't I did not want to see it. Meaning, see it done. Let me, like, because it's the idea of someone I'm sticking like, a needle. At boy, you. is and that it, love. It, it's, it's, it, it, I don't want to see it, but I'll pay for it to, to be done. We're going to be together for the rest of our lives together, but I just want to look at it. Look, look at it. when You go yeah, have it like, done. I'm, I'm going to go somewhere else. No, I, I get it. I just thought that never was gonna, I'm never going to see it because I'm never going to look at his chest again. Okay. Um, that's not a thing. <laughs> that would never be a thing. Um, but he he did he I keep I think it's oh gosh fuck right I think it is on this side listen yeah, it's, not the newly, to... it's not the newlywed game you're not gonna be quizzed on this so don't yeah out. yeah I think it's on the right his his right your left <laughs> my whatever it doesn't yeah. anyway if it's you there. look at him and it's, <laughs> and it's on the left it's yeah the left. it's on his right yes that's what I think. Okay. That's where I'm remembering. It's so weird because I didn't see him this morning. <laughs> We're in bed. I don't always. I don't always look at his chest. Anyway, sorry. Just... <laughs> but he got one. It has some color. It's, it's it's really nice. I really like it. He got a um, got a heraldic bear, um, which kind of ties to some of his um, SCA roots, and it's a bear. You know, go figure. Um, so it just all kind of worked. The, really the stereotypical tattoo for a bear is a bear paw. Yeah, it's not a bear paw. Well, it's, it a bit, a bear. it's usually, yeah, actually, usually those tattoos are more like cat paw or dog paw. <laughs> right, I, what well, most people so, have. Well, that, that brings up an interesting thing. What about like the people who get like other languages as tattoos? And then, like, you see the urban legend theme stuff <laughs> where, like, it gets translated yes. and people are made fun of because they're like, that's great. You have Asian characters. It says asshole. <laughs> like, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, like, that has bothered me. Like, when I see that stuff, like, yeah, there is some schadenfreude. Like, there's a little, like, humor, you know, mm-hmm. at looking at the misery of someone else, even yeah. if, if it's even remotely true. But it does yeah. also make you think, like... Like I thought about that, and I was like, I, I, like I would need seven thousand like 
like sources saying this is absolutely authentic before mm-hmm. I would even dream mm-hmm. of having something like that done. What right. I would want to do is if I got like Japanese or Chinese characters, I would want the person that's doing it to be a native speaker reader mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. to be the one if any at least does the design, if not the actual tattooing. Although yeah, I mean it's because tattoo artists can can do a foreign foreign language easily enough. As long as you have like the stencil, <laughs> you have an image, they can easily transfer that onto something that they can basically right. stencil onto you. So it's it's easy enough for tattoo artists to do it, but yeah, I would I wouldn't want to like if I got something in Japanese, which most likely if I did get something in Japanese, I would probably want to get it in Japan. I mean, I think that's fair. I you know, if you're going to had two artists. Well, especially since it has so much cultural significance. Mm-hmm. I mean, to me, that would be like if I really fell in love with something that was like, a, say, a Polynesian or like oceanic design, um, then I would probably along the same lines, you know, be a little hesitant to get it done by somebody who isn't of a culture or of that place or whatever if it had that much like interest to me or whatever then i think it would be best to get it made locally get, so to speak. get the design from the source yeah and, and, and as i said the design it's fair well, if you wanted so... tattoo artist and that's not of it as long as you've got the design that you can give to the tattoo artist for them to use right. then then you should be fine yeah I don't know. I um so yeah, it was just something that came up that I thought about in terms of you know, our culture and stuff and I felt like that was a bit of a touchstone thing that that had some significance to it. In the meantime, the part that we really want to talk about all sexy men do that. And we keep running to on on mine. Oh. I could that. take it. The first person that I think of, and he doesn't really have many pictures of his tattoos, at least from the one Twitter account that I know how, how to get to, to is the Doodle, Doodle Bear. Mm-hmm. That's, his, that's his ex name. Twitter mm-hmm. name. Okay. Let me uh, check. Let me link it to one of them. Well, his most recent one is like shows his pecs. It's not a full body image. Yeah, but I mean, a little more of this. Is... And I, I have noticed looking through, uh, 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 like my Twitter feed, I did find one person who I reposted <laughs> who has something that's kind of similar in the fact that the design of frames his belly Mm, right Mm -hmm. that's also been a thing yeah using the the art design to like alter the perception of like the body which that's been done quite a bit um there was a thing a couple years ago this is pre-pandemic i remember like there was a, a small amount of artists that were doing um tattoo work for like breast cancer survivors mm. who had, had mastectomies and so they had scar tissue and a cu- like there was only like two or three i think that were known of that like were doing the tattoo work to basically try to camouflage the scar mm. to make it look just like the rest of the skin tissue around it which i thought was astounding like conceptually like to like minimize what that would look like um or like was being very artistic with it and so like there would be maybe like flowers or roses or something like done over right. top of it to cover the scar tissue and i've always kind of been um intrigued conceptually uh by that yeah but yeah i like i i think that's to me, that's always been of interest is like how people use it in a certain way. Right. 
I've seen a lot of interesting um, tattoo work that is, um, and I'm always interested, intrigued by certain people's tattoos, especially like placement. I often want to know the story, like kind of like, a, like I want to know the significance. I want to know where you, why you got it and what it means. Um, there are a few that I've seen. Um, I have one friend who has a bunch of um, uh, X Men related and, and car- comic related, you know, tattoos, and each one has a significant because it's a character that he enjoys for one reason or another, and that makes sense to me. Um, uh, each each t- each person I know has a reason for the tattoo that they have, hopefully, and um, I just find it I find it intriguing. It can be sexy to know like the story behind it and know that they took thought and con- you know they put a lot of thought and effort into getting one. Like a friend of mine just got one. I'm just looking. Oh yeah, five hours ago. That's fun. Um, posted a picture. I'm actually going to share it because um, I don't know. I think I know the tattoo, but I don't know. Um. I wouldn't know the significance, but um, um, just very cute. I mean, it's the one. If you're looking at the picture, if you open it up, it's on the, it's under the like stars um, tattoos. Um, King Boo is who it is. I'm assuming looking at someone's um, response. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd be curious to know why he got that one considering what he has already on his body this mm-hmm. one looks a little different than what you know he's got so i'd be curious to know why he got that specific one you know it's ironic seeing that it just made me think about like my best friends i think nearly all of my best friends have tattoos mm. like i was just running through my head and i was like Thinking about like if I <laughs> this is really morbid, my apologies. If I had to identify the body, like what would be the things that I'm looking for? And I was like <laughs> thinking about I was like, well, this one's got this, this, and this. And then this one over here has this and this and this other thing. Like it's it's so strange to me to like think about that and that like that's a part of the way I identify them. Like, and not in a morbid sense, just like that's a part of their identity. These are the tattoos that they have. Yeah. Like I would, um, I was just thinking about him, um, Paul Lanner Mm -hmm. and his arm tattoos and his, his, um, horror movie and, and all of those things, significance. I think, um, I would recognize, probably recognize Paul's very quickly because I know the kind of general genre of a lot of his tattoos. So, um, right. And he has a lot and. They're really nice. They're really fun. They're very, I think they're very unique and I think they're very personal for him. And I think that's the main reason you get them. Right. And and like I was saying, like, I think that's, that's something that I've just always been around. Like I've always been around people who have gotten tattoos for a reason, not just on a whim, not just like, I mean, while some of it may have been, you know, in a fun aspect, like there was some level of intention behind it. Right. So, yeah. I was just fun, looking fun, fun. at um, Pup Ricker's uh, chest tattoo and trying to read it. And I think it's, mm. I am thou, thou art thy. Mm. I think. I may have to ask him someday. Mm. So, before we get into wrapping up, do any of us think we will get a tattoo or another tattoo or plan to do so. Mm. I have no plans at the moment. Fair. Like I don't I don't feel a need to or want to. Um and if I did I don't I don't I have no idea what I want to get. <laughs> it's fair. Huh. 
Mm. Did I still see Damon? We would have to sedate Damon. <laughs> That's kind of the truth. I don't. There are three or four tattoo shops literally around the block from us. And I have. I see it often. I think about it often. Um, I just don't move forward with it. I haven't yet. I haven't yet. I don't know. Um, it might be interesting maybe to do one at 50 because um, I'm hitting that milestone soon. Mm-hmm. Um, but <sighs> I don't know. It's, it's a, I'll put it like this. It's a possibility. I'm not going to completely rule it out, but um, it's going to be definitely a thinker. I'm not going to, it's not going to just be like, let, like spur of the moment kind of thing. Um, right. You're not just going to get a bear paw tattoo. Correct. Um, Although the irony of it is so amusing to me. <laughs> Just to get one, just ironically, right? Like, 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 have one like that looks like this that's sitting on my chest. Like, since it's sitting on my chest, like, just on a bear paw, right there. <laughs> I just think it would be right. funny if you got it at like fifty and was like, "Oh my god, everybody! I got my first tattoo, and I can't wait to show it to you." Like, I've really thought hard about this for so <laughs> long, and I finally decided what I wanted. <laughs> Here it is. Like, I don't know why. Like, I just think that would be so, like, stupidly well, the, the, funny. That's and the whole, how many like, people would not get the joke? Like, wouldn't understand the irony of it. Like, <laughs> Miranda Priestley, like, a bear paw tattoo. Groundbreaking. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, I don't 100% know the reverence by the way you said it. I understood. Mm hmm. Dev Wars Prada is a movie. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But just the 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 idea is the the thought is there, the idea is there. It's just going to be coming up with something and gathering the courage to actually do it. Because a good tattoo artist, FYI, everybody will not do one on you if you are drunk or high. Correct. Yeah. Nowadays. So, well, nowadays, yes, more so. Because people probably people have been sued. <laughs> I've been a witness to a person doing tattoos in a kitchen, like not licensed, just well, like a like yeah, a, like a home just artist person. Yeah, right. Like had a tattoo gun, and like I got asked right then and there if I wanted something. I was if like, they no. don't have like alcohol wipes and are wearing gloves. <laughs> Yeah, and have have a big machine which does it. Yeah, with it, probably Anyways. not a good person to give, <laughs> Car- to give you. Carry that like, and no, and no, and no. Right, like, <laughs> and this was this was some time ago. Like this is yeah. probably fifteen years ago or so. Like I was just I didn't know this was going to be a thing, and I realized that this person was sort of a hobbyist that like you know liked being able to do this. But at the same time, I was like, you do not strike me as like an artist. Mm. So, I am going do to not think I'm going to be interested in anything that you put on people's bodies. That's a no for me, dog. That's a no for me. Like right. I just, right? I'm not like no, no, like no. Actually, totally offensive. Um, I don't care if you have an artist degree from MI fucking T. Um, we are not. <laughs> I am. I, I. I do not trust you in a unhygienic environment. To place right. a tattoo on my body. Right. To stick me with the needle that is going under my skin and leaving me potentially susceptible to germs and such. We're not we're not doing that, Mama. No. Right. Uh uh. Ain't happen. Agreed. <laughs> I if I'm going to a tattoo shop, I would want to at least know their reputation and then right and being like hey where 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 do you go for your tattoos do you have yelp yeah. reviews <laughs> mm. gary what about what? you did you answer oh um 
I think it's inevitable that I will get one. I just don't know quite when and how. And now that we're discussing it, I'm like, oh, I got, I got seven months um, to kind of like <laughs> get it figured out. Although I just realized that might be something to do right before my birthday. Mm. Like is like the the closure on my birth year. You actually 50. completed that mini trip room. Right. Like, like, so I don't know, like I have to, I have to think about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of inevitable that I will eventually end up getting something. Um, and it is interesting to me how people have thought about like different things. I've also thought like in terms of like your body changes. So if you're not like of a, of a individual that has like kind of a, that's going to not be a great word, like regimented lifestyle that you like are pretty consistent with like your dietary intake and stuff like your body can change and like you can get bigger, you can get smaller and like your skin also will modify. And so your tattoo might get stretched out or not. Um, and is that important to you? I, I will in that say, aspect? I will say when I got my tattoos, I was a lot skinnier. Hmm. But like, but you don't necessarily have them in a place I think that would have been affected that much by that. Yeah, probably not. Um, but I mean, I think of like people who get them on their like their bellies, on their chest, mm -hmm. on their legs, like on mm -hmm. their thighs or on their calves, like, and how that, like, your body can reshape itself over time. And in some ways, I guess it's not that um, big a deal. But as a person who's been several different body sizes in the course of my lifetime, that's another factor. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and and it is ironic because a part of me, when the pandemic happened, you remember everybody was like trying all these different hair things because they didn't have to work and they were just at home and I was still right. working. And a part of me was like, oh, that seems kind of fun. I might do that. And then I just never did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Same. But I also, but I also feel like that was kind of the, the, like you, I think sometimes like we get like decision paralysis. Maybe that's a better way to phrase it because you know, you're like, you want to do the right thing or whatever. And is it going to be the right time? Blah, blah, blah. And, and also it's like, yeah, but why not just do it? Right. So, well, and, and also keep in mind, there's nothing wrong with not getting a tattoo. You don't have to, there is no right. requirement. There is nothing right. wrong with you for, for getting a tattoo. N not getting a tattoo if you right. don't want a tattoo or you know you kind of have decision paralysis you, you don't have the motivation to go maybe you just don't get a tattoo is there anything wrong with that no not at all it's fine don't get a tattoo yeah but if you want one just make sure you're going to your rep reputable reputable Reputable, Reputable. <laughs> tattoo artist. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the key thing is like to find an artist that you like and the work that you see them do. Um, even if it's not necessarily like a style that you think you want to design in, because there is something to be said about the skill of the tattooing that they do versus the actual art design. Mm -hmm. Like some people I think are good tattoo individuals as far as like creating a tattoo through the physical skill and they may not necessarily be a person that thinks of themselves as an artist like they don't design the the imaging yeah but where others really good are at, at, at the doing the tattoo but make sure right. you at least have the design before them like Honestly, these these two, I basically get a picture of the cover of a CD. <laughs> right. I just want this part. Nothing fancy. I, uh, technically, uh, my power button one isn't exactly how I originally wanted it, but I'm okay with it. I'm not, I'm not that picky. I actually kind of wanted an outline and have it filled in with red. But I didn't mm. I wasn't clear about that, and mm. I, I'm fine. It's not exactly what I wanted at the time, but you know what? 
I'm happy with it. I'm good. Right. right. Nothing wrong with it. Although I probably could go to a tattoo artist to fix it. Mm hmm. Dude, I mean, that is annoying. one of the things I guess that's an upside is like if you don't like something, you can have it touched up. Right. Like, and there's, and I think there's actually been shows on that. Um, there's probably even YouTube channel, like, or whatever dedicated to like showing how like someone can take something and freshen it up or change it or cover it up if necessary. Mm-hmm. But I'm good with this. I have no qualms with it. Well, here's my question for you folks, the watchers, the viewers, the listeners. We love you all. Uh, What tattoos do you have? Do you want a tattoo? What tattoo would it be? Why do you not want a tattoo? Are are tattoos appealing? Do you find them sexy? even if it's somebody on somebody else. Let us know. There's plenty of ways to do that. You can pop over to our website, leave a comment on our blog at CubsOutloud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutloud at gmail.com. Very close to the same thing. You can also, uh, I need to pull up the thing. Uh, give us a call. You know, tell us by voice at 361 Wall Talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can leave a comment on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Cubs Out Loud. On our Twitter slash X at Cubs Out Loud, the appropriate place of the URL. Over on the YouTube video for this at Cubs Out Loud. Or you can even join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. You have to have telegram, sign up for telegram, but that's about it. You can also uh, find out when we're planning on recording these shows by going through our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col, which, did you send a bit invitation for that? I didn't see it. Yeah. Did I? Okay. You can also get various designs uh, on a shirt, such as the ones we're wearing. I got the 2.0 shirt. We got Consent is my foreplay, which is designed by Smashy. Or you can get one of our own own original designs, which is the made to be shirt. I think Gary has now a hat or a mug or a handy towel. He's showing both the handy towel and the mug right there. Actually, I think that was the Dragos one, but you know, we yeah. got we got some from the main show too. And and you know what? There's nothing wrong with also getting a drag race one. Do you like drag race? We got a lot of drag race ones. I think we even have a purse there. <laughs> we do. <laughs> if you like our smashy designs, you might like his own personal work. You can find that tpublic at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash cubs out loud or uh, send us a donation at paypal.me slash cubs out loud. Which maybe might need new equipment when I get into the new place. I don't know. Because, you know, I will be in Cincinnati. Yeah. Damon and I will be in the same city. So yes. why are we doing a, a, a Skype call across town? <laughs> well, when it, works for, it works for the recording. <laughs> As it was. Why did I do it to begin with? <laughs> because we were <laughs> poor at the time. Uh, <laughs> still, uh, we're on a budget. <laughs> you can find us on the many podcasting platforms, Apple Podcasts, uh, Amazon, Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It's Box, Step Box, Puppy Box, Cub Box, something or other. My Box Cub Twitter account just had a few reposts go through today. <laughs> on topic. Damon. Uh, let me take a sure. Okay, I'm not. I'm okay, good. I'm not. I just want to make sure I wasn't muted. Uh, yay. 
Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most spirit related sites are on Facebook. You can also find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter and Pup Umbra 79 on Blue Sky. Um, those are not safe for work. For the safe for work stuff, you can go to DMA Gamer 79 on Twitter or TikTok. I'm also a part of Vitry Productions. I do a um, couple of podcasts with them, gaming podcasts with them. Check us out. And if you want to find me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.